You're doing it. More? Yeah, you do what we all do. You come to these meetings, you More talk about it, you and But there's a disconnect between the don't don't just uh, shout at them. For, I mean, I want to shout at this guy. Shout out. Okay, I think you well, just tell the truth as you see it. I don't even know why it's a minority or white guy issue. I don't think race matters at all on skepticism. I don't think sex matters. Yeah, there's more white guys. Sorry. Just keep telling the truth as you see it, and uh, people that are smart will figure it out. I, I, there's, no, there's no plan. This is not a political rally for we have to get our point of view over. Uh, boy, I just think that's wrong. I just think just tell the truth. There's not supposed to be a whole program. I, I, I don't know. Just for fun. I won't say that again, I guess. <laughs> Is it even true? How many women are here? Women in... Raise your hands. That's pretty darn good. Well, that doesn't look like just a handful. That looks like that's a lot of people. So. She's not dead yet. Just, just quickly, at, at, I should mention, I was just at another skeptics conference a, a couple of months ago Blast in femur. October in Albuquerque. And um, there were not that many women there. And as a matter of fact, I'm 39 and I was one of the youngest people there. And uh, it's, it's very heartening for me to see so many young people and, and so many women here uh, because I like women. That's, that's a separate <laughs> issue, I suppose. But um, I, I agree with Penn. It's not, it's, it's not necessarily a minority and women issue. I think it is because there isn't enough in, in, in the movement. We're not maybe reaching these people. But I think it, to, 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 to follow up on what you're saying is that if we teach them, people are smart, but they don't necessarily have the, have the skills to think critically because it's not something that comes naturally. If you do teach them those skills at a young age, I think that they will then be naturally become more skeptical as they grow old. But you're also not talking about skepticism and, and truth. You're talking about these organizations, people who watch South Park all the time, who know that that's a skeptic show and an atheist show and a very well-rated show. They're out getting laid. They're 18 years old, for Christ's sake. They don't come to things like this. There are atheists and skeptics that don't belong to this damn organization. There are punks. There are ravers. There are young people. There are good-looking people who believe this stuff who just don't want to hang out with us. It's not the movement. It's us. All right, next question. Um, I'm pretty sure we just got insulted, but I'm not sure. Maybe for you. Uh, I guess this is mostly for Miss Peoples, but I guess in general. Um, on the talk radio, uh, sh uh, talk radio station that we have in my hometown, occasionally there'll be a commentator who gets on the whole evolution versus creationism thing, and usually, he, and he takes a very strong creationist view most of his arguments can be easily taken care of. Um, but unfortunately, pretty much everyone that calls in follows his creationist ideals. As someone who believes in evolution, what's the best way to handle it? I'd love to call in, but I'm worried that if I call in and I don't sound proper, or if I don't put together a coherent thought, could I do more damage than help? Now, I point out that Alan is Canadian. <laughs> It's okay, my daughter goes to school at, at University of Toronto, so Does the whole it's top right. of her head lift off when she talks? Or is it, uh... Go ahead, ma'am, please. I'm so... Couldn't hear you, Al. Oh, lucky you. My, my, question, my question for you would be, when those creationists call up with their questions, how articulate and persuasive are they? They're, they're lay people. They probably know a lot less about this than you do. Just go for it. In this case, indeed, tell the truth. Uh, give them a little straight science. Give them some. You know, tell them to go to Talk Talk Origins or some other uh, some other site where they can find out more information. Um, one of the things that probably everybody here on this panel is put up with at some point or another is being the skeptic on some. Um, television show or something where you have 25 seconds to debunk the last two hours of trans channelers and psychic detectives and other nuts. And, you know, what do you do? You can't possibly refute all of this nonsense, even though you could. You have the information to do it. I think what most of us generally end up doing is just trying to open the door a crack, light that candle, so to speak, throw a little bit of light on the subject, try to get people to at least think with a little somewhat more open mind about this issue. You know, is there another explanation is something I use a lot. Um, go thou and do likewise. And if all else fails, offer them the one million dollars from the JREF and see how fast they shut up. Yeah, I'd like... 
Uh, I'd like to um, share an answer that uh, hit me a few years ago, and that is that the, the, um, the advent of the internet made it possible for um, our minority skeptical viewpoints um, to be effective in an unbalanced program. And uh, very simple, uh, I used to, I got to the point, I've, I've had a lot of uh, opportunities to get into debates and I don't particularly care much for them. But um, since uh, uh, I've developed a web presence, uh, I've come to the conclusion that there's a very simple goal that can be effective and that is that get out the web addresses. Um, if you want to um, take a particular, promote a particular point of view, um, even if you only have one minute out of 30, put your, get, your, get your favorite websites um, out there and people will look and then they can go and they can look at unfiltered material. Face it, the media are against us for the most part. Um, they don't see, the, most, of, most of the people that control the media are economically motivated. They're interested only in audience size and whether they can sell ads. Um, there's not a lot of equity, and, but there is an effective way to get across, and that is uh, to tell people where they can get more information. HamiltonLives.com. Uh, could, I, could I enter in just for a moment to share a wonderful experience I had uh, with a dyed-in-the-wool creationist who is no longer, and I don't know if it uh, was because of me or not. I doubt it. I pick my fights very carefully. So I listen to the creationists, and I really don't try to argue. I spend my time with the moderates who seem much more open and much more in need of the real information. Um, but I had an opportunity to interview a dyed-in-the-wool creationist over the Internet who is living in Australia, a very brilliant fellow. He was an American citizen, was there working. He uh, went to Berkeley. So, you know, he had some ideas and had gone through several periods of his life when he went from one belief to another. And so I interviewed him, and he was one of these people that when he went down my six typical questions that usually take people an hour to answer, he had them down pat. That he didn't know much about evolution, but the evidence he had seen told him it didn't happen. Um, and that he couldn't imagine what evidence he could see that would convince him of evolution. It was the typical kind of thing. So I thanked him for his interview, and I included that in the book. Two years later, he called me frantically saying, I got your book, I got your book, and I must tell you, I'm no longer a creationist. He said, I started reading a book called Finding Darwin's God. Yep. And he said, uh, I'm going back to the States now. My tour is over here in Australia. He lived in a fundamentalist community, one of those pockets of creationism outside the United States, which I said were very unusual. And he said, I'm excited about it. It's changed my life all over. I'm reading a lot of stuff about evolution, but I haven't told the folks I live with yet. I don't know what they'll think about me. Uh, and I haven't contacted him in a while. He's come back, and as far as I know, he's not living in a commune or anything, again, with uh, believers of his own. So it can happen. I'd like to think we just spread the seeds sometime and just kind of keep at it and let people find their own way. I'm reminded of Dan Garvin last year, the fellow who spent 25 years in Scientology, and when he was asked why he left, he said, I just started thinking and I, I couldn't stop. 